my name is Tori and I am a doctor of physical therapy who specializes in pelvic dysfunction, which means I treat things that can go wrong around the pelvis and this includes sexual dysfunction. I am filming this in the midst of a bit of a windstorm, so hopefully the audio isn't too bothersome. But I have gotten the request to talk about what causes and how to treat low libido or low sex drive in women multiple times by women of all ages. And I've been hesitant to take on this topic because sex drive can be very multifaceted and low sex drive can be a little mysterious and there really isn't any one general piece of advice or one global idea that I could share that could really help treat all women who are navigating low libido. However, if there's anything that I've learned from navigating my own multifaceted, mysterious health conditions, it's that having access to knowledge, resources, and structured ideas has been really, really helpful for me. And that's what I I want to try and provide for you. So thank you genuinely so much for requesting. It's an honor and I will do my best to walk you through exactly how I would approach low libido as a patient who is also a pelvic health provider. In everything that I've read, the underlying theme is that you need to comb through all of the potential triggers and identify and treat the specific trigger that is affecting you and your libido. So this is going to be the first video in a series that is dedicated to helping you discover your specific trigger so that you can have some direction in how to treat it. We are going to be Begin that series with today's video talking about healthy and normal changes in libido, when those changes become abnormal, and how someone is officially diagnosed with low libido, which is known in the medical community as female sexual interest slash arousal disorder. On that note, let's begin by talking about normal changes in libido. It is important to me that you know that there are no scientifically set standards when it comes to a woman's sex drive, how often she's masturbating, or how often she is engaging in sexual activity with her partner. Whatever feels good and satisfying to the woman and her partner is considered normal and that varies greatly from woman to woman and relationship to relationship. It's also very important to me that you know that sex drive naturally fluctuates. It's very normal to experience periods of heightened high sex drive and periods of low sex drive. Low libido is considered abnormal when it causes the woman distress. If you talk to a traditional Western healthcare provider about that distress, he or she will likely try to rule out or diagnose you with female sexual interest slash arousal disorder. This is diagnosed using four different criteria. Criteria number one is that three of the six following symptoms are present. Absent or or reduced interest in sexual activity, absent or reduced sexual erotic thoughts or fantasies, absent or reduced initiation in sexual activity, or feeling typically unreceptive to your partner's sexual advances, absent or reduced sexual excitement or pleasure during most or all of your sexual encounters, and this is generally speaking in the range of 75 to 100 percent of the time. Absent or reduced sexual interest or arousal in response to internal and external cues. So examples of this would be like a flirty text message from your partner, seeing your partner naked, or not feeling aroused by your partner's compliments, by your partner's sexual compliments. And finally, number six is absent or reduced pleasure in your genitals or other erotic pleasure areas during most or all of your sexual encounters. And again, that's that's that 75 to 100% of the time range, you're not feeling those pleasurable sensations that you're used to feeling in the parts of your body that you're used to feeling them in. So criterion number one is that three of those six symptoms, at least three of those six symptoms is currently present. Criterion number two is that 
those three or more symptoms have been present for at least six months. Criterion number three is that those symptoms and them being present for six months is causing significant distress. So you need to feel like something is wrong. You need to feel like something is atypical and expressing that knowing to your healthcare provider should be enough to meet that third criterion. And finally, criterion number four is the sexual dysfunction is not better explained by a non-sexual mental disorder, a consequence of severe relationship distress, other significant stressors, and is not attributable to the effects of a substance or medication or another medical condition. Now, technically you do need to meet criterion number four or letter D in order to get the official diagnosis of female sexual interest slash arousal disorder. However, some of the things mentioned in that criterion can absolutely cause low libido and could cause low libido for a period of six months that causes distress in the woman. And so I am going to take the time in this series to really investigate some of the things that were mentioned in that very last criterion because I think sometimes those things get missed, even by incredibly well-meaning and good-intentioned healthcare professionals because the truth of it is we are human, sometimes we have bad days, sometimes we are in situations where we are overworked, and even though we really want to take the time and the energy that we know each patient deserves, we don't always have it to give them, and so I do want to kind of look at some of the different things mentioned in that criterion and make sure that you understand how each of those things could affect your sex drive. And I wanna make sure that you have the knowledge to bring that up to your provider. You know, in an ideal world, you wouldn't have to. In an ideal world, your provider would know your medical history really well, be able to kind of piece together this puzzle for you, but unfortunately, that isn't always the reality. And so, yes, you do need to meet this last criterion, criterion number four, part D, to get the official diagnosis, but I do think that sometimes some of the things in that criterion get skimmed over or can be missed. All of this to say, <laughs> getting this diagnosis from a physician can be helpful because it validates your experience and it also gives the physician a diagnosis to use in order to prove to insurance companies that you may be in need of certain treatments or certain medicines, which is great, but the actual diagnosis does very little when it comes to actually treating the low libido. And that's because your libido can be affected by your medications, your physical body, your hormones, your psychology, your relationship, and your lifestyle. And I want to use this series to talk about each of those umbrella topics and break them down one by one, to talk more specifically about what could be affecting you underneath each umbrella so that you have a little bit more direction in order to seek the treatment that you need to get better. So we'll start the next video by talking more about medications. How can you know if a certain medication that you're taking is causing low libido? And if that's the case, how can you seek treatment? All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that my idea about how to tackle this topic makes sense. I know how powerless navigating mysterious conditions can feel, and I really want to focus on giving that power back to you in the form of information and knowledge and structured ideas. If you liked this video and you like the idea that I have for addressing this topic, Topic, please don't forget to like the video, share it. If you have questions, if you have requests, if you have better ideas about how to navigate this topic, anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. I do try really hard to read and respond to all of my comments. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram. And finally, please subscribe to the channel for more content, not only about pelvic health, but also about life things. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.